The Satajayat Rai Preservation Project really started with Rai receiving an honorary Oscar at the 64th Academy Awards. The producers who put together that telecast had a lot of difficulty in assembling the clip package. The prints they found were beat up, scratched, mangled, missing sections. So a coalition of the Academy and nonprofit foundations started an effort to preserve Rai's films. Ray is one of the essential figures in the golden age of international art house cinema. The Apu Trilogy was in a sort of special place, not only in his career, because it was the start of his career and it's what launched him on the international scene, but also because the films themselves were in such lamentable condition. Just as people were starting to really commit themselves to preserving his masterpieces, as part of that work, there was a tragic fire at a lab in London, a lab called the Henderson Film Lab. The result was that several vaults worth of nitrate and safety film were either completely destroyed or severely damaged, including the negatives to the Apu trilogy. Edges were melted, uh, perforations were uh, torn and distorted, and sometimes whole sections were fused together. And so those original pieces that came back from the fire seemed to be a total loss. But luckily, the director of the Academy Film Archive asked for all of the film, and even any film cans related to Rise Films, to be shipped from London to Los Angeles. Calling to have it sent to the Academy to be preserved, and then not throwing it out despite the fact that it had been deemed completely unusable is a kind of act of faith that says, you know what, this thing, this film that passed through the camera, that those actors stood in front of, that that director caused to roll in the first place and caused to cut, there's something sacred about that, and it has to be preserved. They stayed there, they sat there on our shelves for 20 years, and when we had this opportunity to do the digital restorations with Criterion, that started us thinking, is there anything left? Could we go back to them? This is the film that's been sitting at the archive for 20 years. The first thing we did is take them out of those smoky cans <laughs> and find out what was left. Sometimes the results were pretty horrific. The first can that we opened should have made us close the cans and just say, okay, we can't use these because they were, I mean, the film literally looked like it was in a fire. This is an example that was of an extremely charred film, completely melted together. This was probably closest to a direct flame. It was brittle, it was dry, it was flaky. The ends were, were, were kicking off. You, but you really couldn't pick it up without falling apart in your hand. The one lab in the world, with a very high degree of confidence, said, yes, we believe that we can non-destructively get it into a condition where we can scan it and do some tests, was the Imagine Ritrovata at the Cineteca Bologna in Bologna. I kind of saw it as if you have really one shot at this. And if you don't get it right, you may damage what you have, you may lose the ability to scan it ever again. We had to take out what was entirely burned. There were literally charred pieces, fused pieces, and it was really sad, but we had to know what we could save and what we were just leaving behind. When we had those pieces that could be saved, we moved it right away to Italy. Their first step was to physically get the materials into shape to get it through a scanner. They spent thousands of hours first rehydrating the reels so that they were less brittle and could be unrolled safely without further damaging the image area. They decided to scan it sprocketless, which meant that it, wouldn't have, it would be very unstable in the gate on the scanner. Then they would do a test where they would take out the, the bad perforations and the bad splices and put new ones in. So then it could go through a pin register gate which would make it much more stable. All of this work had to be done by hand, frame by frame, perforations by perforations. Every single splice had to be rebuilt. All of the tape had melted at a different rate from the underlying celluloid, which caused other kinds of things to seize up. And in the end, about half of the film from the first two films, I would say 40% of the surviving original negative from Padre Panchali, and about 60% of the surviving original negative for Aparajito were usable. 
once we had a full assembly, then we started with six or seven months of, of straight on digital restoration work. We're very fortunate that Criterion had a workflow to handle 4K restoration because this is an extremely expensive process. A 4K restoration of Indian features like this is almost unheard of to do in an archival perspective. It was really our partnership with Criterion that allowed us to do that. There were color grading issues, there were stabilization issues, there were dirt and scratches, matching different pieces of film to each other, stealing information from different parts of adjacent frames. By far the biggest job we've ever done. The most important thing we had to fix was that warping. Plastic doesn't warp in one way. Plastic kind of warps all over the place, which means if you lay it flat after you've warped, you end up with sort of a geometry issue. This was sort of a logistical nightmare for the computers to try to figure this out because there's no checkbox for fix the geometry of the warped film here. That doesn't exist, so you have to come up with the ideas yourself. The most important piece of restoration equipment is never the computer, is never the software that we're using. It's the person who's running the software, and it's that person's experience. Our principle when we undertake a restoration is we would rather see original damage than see evidence of a fix. What you want to be showing on screen is something that feels like the best imaginable print that could have been made from that original negative when it first came out. The way we look at movies, the way we watch movies, has changed substantially over the course of cinema history. Modern audiences that are used to high definition video and super clear, crisp, clean images, dust and dirt and scratches would be something potentially so distracting that it would actually take viewers out of the movie. Rai is known for his narratives and as a very humanist filmmaker, but I think he's underappreciated as a visual storyteller. We've preserved these films at their full visual quality, the full impact of the images, not just the stories. I do believe that right now, if you watch these films, you probably will have a better viewing experience than you would have if you went to see the print in the 50s. The satisfaction of then seeing these films open 60 years after they first played in New York be reviewed and discovered by a whole new generation of film writers and cinephiles. That's what we all did it for in the first place. Over the past 20 years, the Academy and its partners have been able to preserve 20 of Rai's films. I'm very excited to move forward beyond the Apu trilogy and see what other films we can get done this way and bring them back to new audiences as well.